10 Things WWE Fans Should Know About LA Knight's Career Before WWE 10. Started out in Heartland Wrestling Association. Born Sean Ricker in Maryland, LA Knight got his start training in Cincinnati's Heartland Wrestling Association, which at one time was a WWE developmental territory. Initially debuting under the ring name Deuce in 2003, he ended up changing his moniker to Dick Rick and stuck around with the promotion all the way to 2009. During this run, the future LA Knight's opponents included such names as Nigel McGuinness, Sammy Callahan, and John Moxley, who also trained with Wa and was even Knight's roommate at one point. 9. Had WWE tryout matches. The first of these was actually televised as Knight and his roommate John Moxley were taken out by the Big Show in a handicap match on a May 2006 episode of Heat. Knight returned to a WWE ring in late 2008, teaming up with Snitsky in a losing effort against Crimey Time in a dark match before ECW on Sci-Fi. 8. Wrestled for NWA California. In 2009, L.A. Knight became a regular in the National Wrestling Alliance-affiliated Mach 1 Pro Wrestling in Anaheim, California. In the newly formed NWA Promotion Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, Sean Ricker held a number of championships and got a shot at the big belt when he took on Adam Pearce for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. 7. Managed by Paul Bearer. During his time in SoCal, Sean Ricker had a legendary manager in Percy Pringle III, better known to WWE fans as Paul Bearer. Originally managing Natural Selection as part of his Pringle Dynasty stable, Pringle also managed Ricker when he split up with Brian Cage, going as far as setting up an entire tournament called the PP3 Cup just to get his client a title shot. 6. First WWE Developmental Run after coming up short in a loser leaves CWFH match against Scorpio Sky, Sean Ricker signed to WWE for the first time in his career in 2013 as NXT's full sale era was in full swing. Debuting under the ring name Slate Randall as part of the first Performance Center class, the newcomer started off not unlike most developmental talent. Losing matches to established NXT talents of the day like CJ Parker, Mojo Raleigh, and Baron Corbin. After about 15 months, Slate Randall was released from WWE in August 2014 without ever having a televised match. 5. Member of the Rising in Impact. By the spring of 2015, Sean Ricker found a new home in Impact Wrestling, where he got a new ring name, Eli Drake. He debuted as part of Drew Galloway's babyface faction The Rising to feud with MVP's beatdown clan alongside Micah, aka Tenga Loa. But the group came to an end when BDC beat The Rising in a match where the losing team had to break up. From there, Drake turned heel on Galloway, interfering in a title match and subsequently feuding with his former teammate. 4. Had his own talk show segment in Impact. While reaching a wider audience than before in Impact, Eli Drake soon developed a reputation as a great talker. With his catchphrases like, that's not an insult, that's just a fact of life, and tagging every sentence with yeah carrying on to this day. Drake ended up getting his very own talk show in the Impact Zone. Titled The Fact of Life, Drake had his own faux late night talk show set. Not to mention a dummy button atop his desk that he'd hit to spam an annoying soundbite of himself shouting, dummy, yeah. 3. Impact World Champion. With promo skills and solid in-ring abilities, it was inevitable that Eli Drake would start earning championships in Impact. The King of the Mountain Championship, formerly the Legends title and the TV title, and a short tag title run with Scott Steiner, Drake also reached top of the promotion. In August 2017, Eli Drake won a 20-man gauntlet match to capture the vacant Impact World title, which he held for 146 days before dropping it to Austin Aries. 2. Tag Team Champion on NWA Power After departing Impact in 2019, Eli Drake found himself in the National Wrestling Alliance, continuing to work under the Eli Drake name. Drake was a regular on NWA Power where he formed a tag team with fellow Impact alum James Storm. 
At the January 2020 pay-per-view Hard Times, Drake and Storm dethroned the Rock and Roll Express to capture the NWA World Tag Team Championship. 1. Almost signed to AEW. Eli Drake's departure from Impact was in 2019, the same year that All Elite Wrestling started up. AEW and Eli Drake were actually in talks to the point where Drake had an entrance theme in place and a contract to sign. Eli Drake never became All Elite, instead opting to sign with WWE, where he debuted in February 2021 as LA Knight. 